Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Azorius Disturb. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope that I'm able to get this up on Monday. If not, you'll see it on Tuesday. I am a little behind, still recouping from last week being out. But again, guys, I really do appreciate you being so supportive and so understanding of the time that I have to take away. Uh, thankfully, we're trying to, to kind of push time a little bit differently. Uh, my wife is back at work because she is a teacher, uh, and therefore I have a little bit more time in the mornings now, which is great. So uh, I'm going to try and utilize that time and get ahead on everything and then that way we don't miss any days. But we are taking a look at an Azorius Disturb deck. Now, uh, first and foremost, I have to say the Oracle is the individual who created this list. They are in our Discord community. So Oracle, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you sharing this list with me. We have had a lot of you sharing lists uh, with, with me that I can put into these videos. I really do appreciate that. It's been an absolute blast trying out your decks. Uh, for better or for worse, I think they are really fun. And it's an opportunity uh, because I think what's, uh, what ends up happening very often uh, is we find things that we might just want to try. Uh, and I think we may find some of those this time, but we will see as we go along. Uh, I do want to call out in particular T. Stokes, who was very kind and followed up with me on some of the changes that we made or, or we suggested uh, with the jump bombardment list that he shared. Uh, Stokes, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate the kind words. Uh, and I'm glad that the deck worked out for you uh, with, with some of those changes that we recommended, in particular the Fable of the Mirror Breaker I thought was a good one. So uh, congratulations on hopefully getting a little better win rate out of that. But let's talk about the deck. So obviously this is a Disturbed deck, which just means that uh, we're featuring a lot of the Disturbed mechanic, which allows us to play the cards back out of the graveyard for that Disturbed cost in the case of Lunark Veteran here, we can play the Phantom uh, for one and a white. After this has already been destroyed, we can play it again. Uh, what that allows is a lot more inter board interactive pieces. So in particular, we are able to sweep the board and it kind of just be okay. Uh, we actually top out here with the Doom Scar at the very top, which does allow us to sweep the board, deal with opposing creature decks that might be able to outpower us or out aggress aggression us. I hope I'm phrasing that correctly. Uh, and so we can sweep the board and then we have the ability to reset, whereas they may not, depending on what cards are in their hand. Uh, hopefully they don't have very many. Uh, we do also feature, again, just quite a number of disturbed creatures. So Lunark Veteran is going to gain us some life ideally. Uh, we do have Fleeting Spirit, which does not technically have disturb. However, uh, you do have the ability to flicker it, essentially, so you can discard a card, exile it, and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And what that does is just make it really tricky for the opponent to truly deal with it. Uh, which is great because it's a two mana three one. It is a fairly aggressive card in the early turns of the game. Uh, there's also the ability to pay one white, exile three cards from your graveyard, and give it first strike until the end of the turn. There's some non-bow potential with that. Uh, that I would like to just touch on as we're going through the games, but essentially if you're exiling cards from the graveyard with Disturb, uh, obviously that's not the goal. You're trying to get rid of other cards in your graveyard, but if that's all you have, there is a potential that you're giving yourself less outs in the near future uh, because you don't have as many things in the graveyard to actually play back. So just something to keep in mind, not necessarily something that needs changing. Uh, we do have Twinblade Geist here. Uh, this is a 1-1 one, one for 2 with Double Strike. And then on the Disturbed side, it's an Enchant Creature. Uh, the Enchanted Creature has Double Strike, and then if it would be put into the graveyard, of course, you exile it. Uh, as far as the 3-drop slot goes, we have Kindly Ancestor, which is a 2-3 with lifelink for 3. Uh, and then again, on the flip side, the Enchanted Creature has lifelink. Uh, and then we have Faithbound Judge as well, which is a 4-4 Defender Flying Vigilance at the beginning of your upkeep. If it has 2 or fewer Judgment Counters on it, you put a Judgment Counter on it. And then if it has 3 or more, it can attack as though it did not have Defender. So this is really one of our bigger payoff cards. You could disturb this out for 7, which is quite a lot, but... Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a Judgment Counter on Sinner's Judgment, which is, of course, an Enchant player. Uh, then if there are three or more Judgment Counters on it, uh, the Enchanted player loses the game. If it would be, of course, put into the Graveyard, you exile it instead. So this is an alternate win con. I think, though, what we are going to see throughout this is that some of these creatures are going to get outpowered, which is why we have the Doom Scar. Uh, again, Oracle, I think you did a great job of putting in that kind of contingency plan just in case and then being able to capitalize on it on the back end. 
Uh, we do have a lot of little interactive pieces. We've got Shelter, Valorous Stance, Disruption. We've got Thirst for Discovery, which is going to draw us some cards. And then, of course, Fateful Absence as just kind of a good catch-all. Uh, we do have two of the Soaring City and two of the Seat of the Empire. Worth noting, two of each of those just means that we're able to play one and not necessarily worry about losing out on the land. Uh, later on so we'll see how this goes guys i'm intrigued uh again oracle i really do appreciate you sharing this list we're gonna hopefully do some some fun stuff with this we'll see how it goes let's jump into game one all right guys and here we are for game number one how do we feel about this hand um i think okay not great uh, and we'll, again, I'll, I'll talk about some of the suggestions I would make throughout these games as we go through, or throughout these decks, but again, um, one of the things that this deck is going to naturally do because of that curve being so low, which is not, let me be clear, necessarily a bad thing at all, uh, is probably just run into, so I'm actually gonna... I don't know if this is a good idea, but we're going to pass. Uh, we are actually going to run into a situation like this where we're probably just going to have a lot of, uh, you know, two drops in the hand all at once, which makes it a little tricky, of course. But that's okay. That's that's just part of it. Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's go here. Um, I think this is probably the better option. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's fine. Old growth troll. Perfect. We can deal with that. All right, um, so the question becomes, do we attack? Um, I'm gonna say yes. Let's go ahead and do this. We do end up sacrificing this, I know, but that's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, now the question becomes, do we wanna throw this down just to guarantee that we can do this next turn? Um, I think not. I think we wait. I think I'd rather see to the Empire on the Old Growth Troll than Fateful Absence. Uh, okay, or that. <laughs> uh, that might be scarier. Awesome. Okay, so again, totally fine. We're just gonna go ahead and do this, and I will just take out the, uh, oddity here. So we do take four, which is not ideal, but it's not the end of the world either. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this down. Let's throw this down. Um... And I think it's going to be just a hold-up position, so I don't think we actually want to... Uh, play this quite yet because if they kill this for whatever or you know they have a way to kill that then we'd rather wait uh, and so we'll see what they're actually able to do this turn um, okay so we are going to go ahead and do this now um, so again I'm killing that because I don't particularly love the idea of killing the old growth troll just so they can replay it uh, so we're killing the oddity before they can actually use the mana to to do that much if that makes sense uh which i think is more important now we'll obviously see i don't know that for sure but that just seems to be the case uh let's go ahead and do this we'll go ahead and throw it here and we'll see if this works um it'd be great if it did all right sick <laughs> uh all right part of me would have rather put it on this but i think we need to keep the aggression going so it's nice that we're able to get a, a hit for seven in here that's a pretty strong hit uh, and then we can actually just throw this lifelinker down as well. So, uh, we'll see how this pans out. Basically, we're trying to get them within Cave of the Frost Dragon, like, realm, if that makes sense. Like, if we can get this in for a solid attack, we're, we'll be in okay shape. Um, but we'll see. We're at, we got them to nine. Uh, they'll certainly be able to do quite a bit this turn if they would like. So, I'm not optimistic about this. Um... Interesting they actually played the mammoth there. That's cool. Okay. Sure. Um, that's actually fine. So we can give the fleeting spirit first strike. Uh, so basically they have to not attack with the old growth troll to really make this worth it. Um, unless, of course, they have like a blizzard brawl or something along those lines. So we'll see. Um, so far, I truthfully think this, is, this has been a really good representation of what we can expect from this deck. Uh, overall, I feel like we're playing it relatively well. We may lose the game, but I think we're doing an okay job of handling the deck and what we're trying to do with it. So, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Alright. Uh, shouldn't auto-pass in this scenario, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. Okay, so they did attack. Uh, so we definitely just let that happen I, I don't think we need to block here uh, it does have trample so it's kind of useless to do so anyway we do have the hermits so that's not bad okay um 
So, what is going to be the play? I think we're going to do this. We're going to try and get in for a decent attack here. Um, Alright, so let's just count up here. If we attack here, they sort of have to block elsewhere, don't they? So this is actually a reasonable attack because they have to block elsewhere. Um, and it actually has to be the Fleeting Spirit, otherwise they die. Uh, so we do actually just get to... Um, can I not? Okay, yeah, I can. There we go. When we got it. That was going to say 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That was exactly enough. That was perfect. That's exactly what we want. We did it. We counted it up all right. Uh, that was perfect. Oracle, great job. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. How do we feel about this hand? Uh, truthfully, if we get one more um, land, we're actually in really good shape. Uh, so I think we'll keep this. Also, I might have just missed some of these two drops in my uh, deck tech. I apologize, guys. Uh, Lusu, very nice. Hello, my friend. How are you doing today? Um, we are going to talk about, again, just a couple of things that have kind of... Um, hmm... How do I want to do this? Let's go uh, Fleeting Spirit. Again, this is just the nice kind of aggressive two drop of the deck. And so let's be mana efficient. Let's go ahead and drop that down. That way on this upcoming turn, if we get a land, we can veteran into something else or, you know, whatever we need to do. Uh, but I think this is just a better option. Um, nice. We also do have the Valorous Stance that does allow us to kind of get in for an aggressive attack here. Um, which honestly, I'm going to try and take that option. Uh, they are not going to block. That's fine. That does allow us to kind of go for something here. Um, hmm. I think we will go with the Denik. Uh, this shuts down graveyards, which really isn't all that helpful unless they've got a... Uh, oh, what's the... The card that gives counters and, you know, indestructible vigilance, all the crazy stuff. Uh, it kind of shuts down the flashback of that, but that's about it. Um... Okay, so they're tapping a red, specifically. Uh, curious to see what this ends up being. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, reality is going to hit. We're just going to end up taking a hit for three here, I imagine. Um, which sucks, but it isn't the end of the world. They're going to Royal Eruption. Okay. Uh, that's kind of okay. Again... The, the nice thing about these kinds of decks, the Disturb deck in particular, is the ability to disturb stuff back. And so uh, the removal aspect of it really isn't all that uh, scary. This does enable quite a bit, by the way. I should have mentioned that uh, in the fact that uh, because you can discard cards with it, if you need a card in the graveyard, you can kind of go with it. But uh, we are going to attack. We're actually going to throw this out. Um... Don't love our position. Again, land is obviously pretty important for us, and we don't have a lot. Um, but we'll do the best we can. Uh, this is nice because it is a one-shot deal, so if they can't deal with it, I will 100% block this aspirant. Uh, looks like they're being very intentional with their tapping once again uh, to get two white. What would be two white? Leave an arc aspirant. Okay. Got another one. Uh, don't love that, of course, but that just means um, they can double up and hit four or five this upcoming turn. In which case, I don't think we block, actually. Uh, I think we just we just take it. Yep. Just going to go ahead and take the, uh, the damage. Kind of sucks, but again, it's fine. Uh, we can actually use that Valorous Stance now if we'd like. Not opposed to that. All right. Uh, again, this might actually help us out a little bit if they go for the Fleeting Spirit kill uh, because we can flicker it. All right, sick. They didn't even go for it. All right. Um, so, I mean, I think the play is pretty clear. We are going to attack in with both here. Generally, I would say let's keep the Vengeful Victim uh, available, but we're going to see how this actually goes. 
Um, not 100% sure that it's the right play at all, but that's fine. They can't block it. It's four damage in. We are also a bit of an aggressive deck, and so I feel like this is relatively important. Okay. Obviously that dies. That's fine. Let's go ahead and throw this down. Uh, and we are going to wait on the Valorous Stance to see where they throw the counters. Uh, I think that's always kind of an important piece of the puzzle here, so let's make sure we're doing this correctly. Uh, do we care? Not really. Uh, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Um, perfect. All right. Let's see what they do. Cave with the Frost Dragon, that's fine. That's a tapped land, uh, so that's actually not terrible. Um, okay. Uh, thankfully, they can't activate it, so that was one benefit to having tapped lands there. Oh, they are going to throw it here, though. Okay. We definitely should have done this, whoops, 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 uh, pre-combat, just so they couldn't have put the counters around. That was a bit of a mistake. My thought was they may just try and power that out. Um, so that was a bit of a calculated risk that unfortunately did not go well, but that's fine. All right. Yep. Uh, now, though, I think we might be able to potentially win. Depends if they have a burn spell or not. <laughs> uh, all right. Basically, we're just saying, do they have it? And it looks like they don't. And we got the win once again. That was a very, very close game, but we did manage to get it. Again, Oracle, so far so good, my friend. I'm really happy with this. We did rank up here as well, which is pretty awesome. So let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Probably going to be our final game. Uh, let's definitely keep this. Uh, I do like it. We've got the Hermit here. Uh, one thing I did check in between games, and I, I actually hugely apologize, Oracle in particular to you. Um, I didn't scroll down <laughs> on the deck tech. There were tons of other two drops in this deck. As you can see, we've got the Hermit, things like that. So uh, completely my fault. Definitely just missed that. Uh, my, my mistake there. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and just just not even deal with that. Um, don't want that Ruin Crab in there. Surprisingly, it's not the end of the world against our deck uh, because we're a Disturbed deck. So that's actually kind of helpful. Uh, but shutting down a, a turn one Ruin Crab is a big hindrance for the mill decks in particular. And so I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, let that happen. And I'm actually just going to throw out the Malevolent Hervet. Hermit, excuse me. If they've got a counter spell, that's fine. Uh, the important thing here is this actually counters things like an upcoming laughter or maddening cacophony or something along those lines. And so I'd rather have this available early uh, just to make sure that if we need to, we can go ahead and throw it out. Um, so, uh, but again, Oracle, my apologies. I did not end up going through the entire deck, but guys, the deck list, of course, will be linked down below. So if you are interested in playing this deck, give it a shot. Uh, it's a blast. I will say it, the, the number of two drops was a bit alarming, uh, only because we end up so often with those situations where you just have a ton of two drops in your hand, uh, which is perfectly fine, but it's one of those scenarios where it makes it a little tricky to hit the curve correctly. Uh, and so, Oracle, if you if you happen to be playing around with this deck a little bit more, just just take a peek at that. Uh, there are some suggestions, again, that I'll give at the end uh, that I think might be beneficial. Uh, but more just things to try, not criticisms. I want to make sure that uh, that's well stated because I do think, you know, it's very easy to take somebody critiquing your deck as, like, frustrating or difficult or, you know, something like that. And I do not mean it that way. I want to encourage everybody who submits a deck to uh, hopefully um, be comfortable submitting decks and not just say like, ah, this is going to be terrible. They're going to, you know, rake me over the coals or something like that. No, that is not the goal. Um, the goal is simply to, to have some fun and hopefully learn something along the way. So no problem either way. Um, all right. So they do have red. So this is going to be the is it mill deck. I'm assuming that's a galvanic iteration. Um... I mean, I think we just have to let it go, right? Uh, yeah, I think we have to just let that happen. Uh, that's fine, but again, they had to go through this process just to be able to, to use the laughter. So we're kind of just staving off the, the inevitable here, um, which is fine. I 
Oh no, it was a behold. Okay, interesting. Very good. Uh, perfectly fine with that. I'd rather it be that. Um, <laughs> I don't want them to just burn us out like crazy. Um, all right, so first things first, let's make sure we get the attack in. Um, I think the play is just gonna be this. Uh, we found this play to be extraordinarily good uh, in the sense that we can very quickly close out a game uh, with the disturbed side here. So we'll see if this actually ha happens again. That'd be kind of sick. Um, I think we're in the, the damage race though of we have to kill them as quickly as we can before uh, they can start milling us out. And so, so far we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, we haven't really seen, all right. Laughter, I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's gonna be Atasha's laughter. No, it's a crush the weak. Okay. Uh, then we're gonna do this. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that. All right, so basically this is a one for one or a two for one. Uh, so really that wasn't all that great for them. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Excellent, uh, that was great. Totally cool with that. Uh, lifelink really doesn't help us here, does it? Um, so it's not actually about getting the lifelink anymore. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna attack in for three. And we're just gonna throw the Geist out. Um, I think knowing, understanding the deck you are up against is a really important uh, piece of mind kind of thing. We know that Lunark Veteran is great at gaining us life. We know the, the Ancestor here could give us some outlet for that as well. We actually don't care that much. <laughs> um, as silly as it is, but we don't actually need all of that life gain because this isn't a deck that's really looking to kill us with life. Uh, and so we're actually more in the camp of we just need to keep our stuff alive and threatening that life total. That's going to be more important. Uh, and thankfully, you know, we're able to pretty much manage that okay, uh, or at least we have so far. Uh, and again, we're seeing the benefit of the Fleeting Spirit. I mentioned in the deck tech that there is a bit of a Nambo there, but I think the benefit is exactly what we're seeing, and that's not something that I mentioned in the deck tech. So Oracle, well done. Uh, that was definitely a, a missed opportunity, I think, on my end. Uh, so fantastic. Uh, we'll see if they have an answer for this again, but it looks like they might not. Okay, uh, that's interesting because it is technically a land uh, if we would like it to be. So, I but I think first things first, let's go ahead and just attack him for three. We're going to keep this up. Um, and truthfully, I think we just pass. Uh, I know this is kind of silly, but uh, now we don't have to discard a card to do this. And we actually don't want to discard a card uh, because we don't have a disturbed creature in our hand here. So, like, at this point, we're just... Yeah, this is great. Uh, thank you for filling up the potential opportunities here. Uh, see, this is why Mill is not necessarily that great against us. Um, we just basically gained, that was basically like a draw seven or something ridiculous like that. Um, I will go ahead, I think, and just do this uh, because if we do get a land, that's actually really important. Um, that's really helpful. That's potentially helpful. That's less helpful. Uh, and I think we'll just take that too. Excellent. All right. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> we could just give it double strike. We've got some options. Uh, all right, six. So let's do this. Um, Denek might be an opportunity here. That is something we probably need to consider just to shut down the uh, Galvanic iteration, it does also shut down a lot of what we're doing. So that is very important to note. It's also a relatively safe play though, uh, for multitudes of reasons. Um, I'm gonna risk the, uh, the plays here. We're gonna do this. Should have played the cave, actually. That was a bit of a mistake. All right, so basically we're we're saying they need to win the game this turn, uh, and that's it. They have to mill 19 cards this turn, or they are done. Um, thankfully, I don't think Maddening Cacophony is really going to get that done, so it's really up to Atasha's laughter. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not enough, but they've got two of them, so yeah. 
All right, here's to hoping. Oh, no, we're dead. <laughs> Didn't even take two. Uh, fair enough, good game. Um, that was actually a close one though. And surprisingly, I'm I'm very impressed with this deck, Oracle. Uh, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. All right, guys, so a couple things to mention. Again, first and foremost, Oracle, I, uh, I really do appreciate it, my friend, sharing this list with me. I, I appreciate that. Everybody who is sending deck lists over to us in that Discord channel, please uh, keep them coming because they're a blast to try. They're a really good time, uh, and, and it's great to feature you guys a little bit. This is a community-driven channel, I would argue, and so it's really good to be able to feature you guys uh, in this way. And so thank you guys very much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Oracle in particular. As far as the deck goes, uh, we saw it do like, I mean, it held its own very, very strongly throughout all three of those games. I would even argue in the last game, I think Mill is a tricky matchup. It's one of those where it's a, it's, it's kind of a, not, I don't want to, I don't want to say that it's all about luck, uh, because that's not fair. Um, but it certainly is about, you know, the opponent having a galvanic iteration into a laughter. And if they have it, they have it. Uh, we unfortunately didn't get to keep our Malevolent Hermit around, which would have been very helpful, um, but that's okay. Uh, I, I think we made them play around it, which is the important piece, and it slowed them down enough, especially with killing the Ruin Crab as well. It slowed them down enough, and it gave us a chance. We were one turn away. If we were able to have attack in at that point, we would have been fine no matter what happened. We had the three damage, even with a removal spell on their side, we could have saved it and continued the onslaught uh, to, to win the game next turn. Couple of things that I would suggest. Uh, and again, they are high, just completely based on suggestion. The curve, very skewed towards two drops, which I think is reasonable in a deck where naturally you're gonna be discarding things. So the disturb cost is probably closer to a more accurate mana cost. Uh, however, we saw it lead to a situation where we had quite a lot of two drops in the hand all at once. And you start to have to make decisions without being able to play multiple spells per turn. Uh, because the land count is naturally going to be a bit lower because you don't need so many lands, uh, it's a little tricky. Um, and just being conscious of that is really important. I think you've got room to move up the curve if you would like to. And what I would suggest is p trying out something like Wedding Announcement. Uh, which may sound a bit odd, but hear me out here. You have got a lot of enchant creatures that go into the graveyard and you can disturb back out. It'd be great to be able to guarantee that the next turn you're going to have a token on the field or something on the field that you can at least attach it to in a situation where you happen to find yourself against a removal heavy deck. Uh, there's quite a lot of them in the meta. It's certainly an opportunity for you to kind of take over. Uh, and so guaranteeing that or at least giving yourself a better odds uh, is generally, I think, going to be helpful. I would also suggest Katilda. Um, I don't have specifics on why I necessarily do, but I think Katilda is just a ridiculous card uh, that you can use to take over the game very quickly. And it's only, you know, three mana on the front side and I believe five, if I'm not mistaken, on the back side. Uh, and so it's one of those where it fits kind of right into the curve that you're already shooting for. It's definitely top end, but it definitely works. Uh, and I think you can capitalize on it. So just a suggestion. Um, just some things to try. Uh, as far as everything else goes, I mean, we did great with it. I'm pretty happy with this. So Oracle, well done. Thank you again. I really do appreciate it. I underestimated the list a little bit in the beginning. My bad, uh, 100%, but I think it did really well. So great job, Oracle. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys again tomorrow.